Hello and welcome to this episode of Range Woodworking where today I'll be turning this stack of rough sawn white oak into this beautiful waterfall mitered continuous grain entryway table. First up I measure and mark for my planned cuts. White oak costs a small fortune in Australia so it really pays to be smart and plan ahead for the breakdown of the boards. I also have to furiously rub my two brain cells together to plan for the continuous grain around the mitered box. Once all broken down, I label the end grain of my boards and spend a considerable amount of time planing the boards down to their final thickness, before using my track saw to put a straight edge on each piece. I'm labelling the boards for the fence and saw method to create coplanar angles for the panel glue up. I'll link a video in the description for a clearer explanation on this. Once planned, marked and labelled, I rip the boards to their final width and lay them out on the bench. Here I just use a square to mark out for dominoes. I'm using dominoes to keep all the boards aligned as I won't be able to send the panel through the thickness of when it's all glued up. To prevent any issues with lateral misalignment, I have the dominoes set tight on one side of the glue up and switch to medium width for the other side. Plenty of glue, plenty of dominoes, and the panel comes together with a bit of encouragement from the hammer fist. I let the glue set up a bit and scrape off the squeeze out. The next day I take the panel out of the clamps and BAM! That's a clever trick. I wish it was actually that quick. I sand off any extra glue squeeze out and get the panel nice and flat. As you can see, I love sanding. Time to cut the sides and top of the box. Using my crosscut sled, I cut the panel into three pieces, but to make sure I maximize that continuous waterfall grain that makes such a feature of this piece, I have to make sure that only a single saw curve uh, is all that's taken out of the joining mitres at the top corners. I then trim the side pieces to the same size uh, using the stop lock. Again, making sure to only trim at the end where the grain won't continue around the bottom. Speaking of the bottom, I square off the bottom panel and then clamp the top and bottom together to ensure they're the same length also. I'm going to use a monster chamfer bit in the router table for perfect 45 degree mitres at the corners. But to make it marginally safer and easier on the bit, I trim off some of the excess using my bevel sled. With hindsight, I probably could have taken a bit more off, but I played it safe. Here I'm just using tape and super glue to attach a straight edge to the edge I want to bevel, so it can run along the bearing. This would be much safer and easier if I'd used a fence to support the piece, but I don't actually have one yet. I make sure I take multiple shallow passes to reduce my risk of ah. That's annoying. 
I probably should have anticipated this. So for my other pieces, I use a marking knife to pre-cut the fibers that would be likely to tear out and I'll fix that one up later. So I make lots of shallow passes, raising it a bit each time. Then I simply cut the pieces down to remove the shattered tear out. I'll use dominoes again to align the mitres and make sure I can apply plenty of pressure when clamping up later. I set the table saw to 45 degrees and cut the back bevel on the front edge of each piece. This is really simple and it adds so much character at the end. Here I'm creating the centre divider between the drawers. This will sit in a stop dado in the top and bottom panel. Because it's a stop dado, I need to cut back the shoulders on the leading edge, so I get to practice my handsaw skills and then tidy it up with a chisel. To make sure the dado lines up perfectly, I clamp up the panels in line and then take far too long to work out that I'll struggle to measure for the centre of these with the pipe clamps on top. There we go. Simple problems require simple solutions. I clamp a straight piece of timber and use a pattern bit to cut my dado. Off camera, I've sanded the inside of the box to 180 grit, and I'll finish with Rubio Monocoat in cotton white. I'm pre-finishing the inside now whilst I have access to it, because it'll be a real challenge once glued up. For those not familiar, you simply rub the finish into the piece using a white Scotch-Brite pad for 10 to 15 minutes, then wipe off any excess with some paper towel, and then I give it a final buff with a microfiber cloth. Now here is a masterclass on how not to glue these up. I use super glue and tape to attach these plywood clamping coils to the face uh, to give the clamps something to pull the mitres tight on. The issue is that the tape doesn't hold well enough and slides around, which I had heard about but couldn't quite bring myself to glue the coils straight onto the face like I should have. So I glue and clamp away using the 90 degree clamp blocks to ensure it's all square. And as you can see here, I just can't get enough pressure to close those miters without the tape sliding all over the place. I clamped it all up, went inside, and then promptly changed my mind five minutes later. So I rushed back out, pried it all apart, scraped off any glue that I could, uh, and did it all again after gluing the coils straight on to the faces this time.
I was pretty edgy at this point, so there's no satisfying close-ups, I'm afraid. Um, but this time, it worked perfectly. And once dry, I simply pop the coils off with a chisel, being careful not to gouge the faces. To tidy up the mitres nice and tight, I cut out some of the dry glue with my marking knife, mash some fresh glue in, and then burnish the gap closed. Tidying up some more of the squeeze out in the box, and it's time to sand the outside. As you can see here, the super glue sands off in no time at all, and then it's time for finish again. More Rubio Monocoat massaged in, wiped off, and buffed. Okay, time to make something for the box to go on. First, I'll tidy up the edges on these boards and rip strips that I'll laminate into legs. As I'm gluing these together, I'm staggering them to make a sort of half lap that will give the apron something to sit on. You'll see later. I'll tidy them up to their final width on the table saw before measuring and cutting them to length. The legs will all receive a nice taper to give them a bit more elegance. So I'm just marking that out now so I don't get myself all mixed up later. Conveniently enough, I'll use my tapering sled to put a taper on these legs. I measure, clamp and run them through the table saw. And it's important to plan your cuts here so that the non-tapered edge is always on the sled. Otherwise, you can get some weird compound angle action happening. And finally, I'll trim the tops of the legs to suit the depth of the apron. The joints of the apron will uh, be simple butt joints as they'll be hidden by the legs. I'll support the joints with dominoes for added strength.
if you can't tell, uh, the Domino is a recent purchase that I'm quite excited about and using as much as possible. Okay, time for another panel. Same deal. Rip on the table saw. Tight domino mortars. Medium domino mortars. Glue, clamp, weight. Time to join the legs to the apron, where I'll again use dominoes for alignment. So I mark and cut these and dry fit to confirm their placement. Time for many a round over, which I actually find really satisfying. So enjoy! Now, to make sure my legs are all square when I glue them up, I've clamped some scraps to the bench that the legs will be flush to once all glued up. I probably sound like a broken record, and one day there's a chance I'll cop some feedback in the comments about the domino, but man, it makes life easy when you can just clip a leg in and move to the next one without worrying about it moving. Now I'm measuring the angle of the tapers. I think it came in around two or three degrees. This angle will then be transferred to the saw blade for me to rip one edge of the bottom stretches so they can marry up nicely with the legs. I'm using these offcuts from the legs to maintain an even height at each corner and I'll glue and clamp those in place. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. I left the roundover short where they're meeting the legs, so I recreate the same roundover with a chisel right up to the edge of the legs. Some more quick tidy up sanding and it's time to trim the panel for the bottom shelf to fit. Again, matching that same angle of the leg taper. To give some mechanical strength beyond glue to the bottom shelf, I'm going to use some through dowels. I bet you thought I was going to say dominoes. Yep, 
You may have seen me turn square stock into dowels before. Basically, I just send the stock through progressively smaller holes until it's where I want it. These then go through the holes with a smidge of glue and get tidied up with a chisel. And then some more quick sanding again. And more finishing. I'm sure you get it by now. These figure eight fasteners will hold the bottom panel and the mitre box to the stretchers and apron respectively. They allow for seasonal wood movement by pivoting to accommodate any expansion. I use a forstner bit until just deeper than the fastener and then screw the fastener to the rail. And what is that? Oh, okay. I'll clamp the panel to the rail and turn it all over using a third hand apparently and then just screw the panel to the fasteners. Time to put my Maasai blanket down and bring the box back in to prepare to attach it. Same figure eight treatment before putting it in place and using a combination square for the reveal before clamping it down to be attached. And then I managed to wrangle it down without any horrifying abdominal assists that time. Nice. Time to build some drawers. I use my track saw to quickly cut some lengths that will become the draw sides before cutting the pieces to length using my crosscut sled. I measure the width required with the draw sides in place and cut the pieces to width. And the bottom panel will sit in a groove around the bottom. And here is where I realized I hadn't locked in my fence and none of the grooves are the same. No bother, I'll just have slightly shallower drawers. And put the grooves in with a locked fence this time. The drawers will be simple glue and nail construction, again with blocks to make sure that they're square. Once dry, I measure for the bottom panel and use my track saw to cut them out. I refine the width of these on the table saw until they're just right.
To install the draw slides, I first put them on some 10mm shims and use an offcut to set the slide back far enough to accommodate the draw faces. From there, I just drill and screw the slides in place with the provided screws. I prop the draw faces up with some 4mm plywood offcuts and slide the arms out until they're flush with the front face. Off camera, I sanded and painted the draw boxes and polyurethaned uh, the base. Apparently, they were a snug fit before the polyurethane and needed a bit of extra encouragement. The bases are screwed in with some leftover screws from the draw sides. Just double check everything still works and it's time to measure for the draw faces. Again, I'm aiming for nice continuous grain across these two. Uh, so first I rip the entire board to width. Going back and forth until it's a perfect fit for my desired reveal. Then I cut it to length and once that's sorted, Cutting that board in half will give me the perfect gap between the draw faces. I measure, mark and drill for the draw pulls and provide a recess in the back for the screw head to sit in. A bit more Rubio later and the faces are ready to install. I've installed the draw pulls also because they won't be accessible once the faces are on. I put the face in place and would usually measure my reveal with playing cards but I can't find my deck anywhere so I'm just using some repurposed manila folder. I insert pieces until snug and then count how many pieces fit. Dividing this pile in two will give me a nice even reveal uh, top, bottom, left and right. Some double sided tape should hold the draw face on until I can clamp it. Or maybe not. Trying again, I help the draw out from behind this time before clamping the face in place. Now some countersunk screws will offer a more permanent fix. And there you have it, that about wraps it up for this build. If you stuck with it this far, I can't thank you enough, truly. And if you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Until next time, take it easy.